Hey everybody. Hey listen. I'm I'm not able to do this live because I'm on a ship right now. I'm on a vacation with my family and we're having lots of fun. But hey listen, I wanted to share with you guys uh, real quick before we actually get into the content of today's video. Number one, have you registered for the event? Number two, has your team registered for the event? Jamie, what event? What are we talking about here? The June event, June 21st to the 23rd. We have all of our top executive directors gonna share so much fabulous information with you guys. It is going to be mind blowing and life changing all at the same time. Believe me, it's gonna be so much fun. We're super excited about it. The challenge is we're running out of tickets and the deadline is also approaching. So one of the two is gonna happen June 10th is the absolute latest date that you can purchase your tickets. So go to experiorevents.com. It'll be in the display or the, the thing below, whatever this is down there. The, 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 what is that called? Description. Yeah. So you're going to have to go to the description, click on or type in experiorevents.com and register right away. We need to get final head counts in very, very soon. And we want to make sure that you get a chance to be there. Be sure you share this with your teams. It's going to be an absolutely life-changing event. I can't stress that enough. Okay. I uh, had one more thing I had to share with you before we get into today's training. The book club. Is anyone registered for the book club? Jamie, what's the book club? Glad you asked. The book club is where we're going to be reading one book every month. Um, I'll be reading it alongside many of our people in this organization. And then we're going to do a special webinar exclusive for those who have read the book of the month. Uh, we're starting off with Five Levels of Leadership by John Maxwell. I just started it. It's unbelievable. Um, I know I'm getting a bit of a head start because it's May 30th here and this is the June book, but I'm a slow reader, so I got to get a head start. Um, also, you can actually YouTube it. And, and if you YouTube Five Levels of Leadership, John Maxwell, it's actually seven hours uh, start to finish to have uh, the 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 audio book, is it called? Audio book, basically on the YouTube. So um, make sure that you do that. And if you haven't registered for the book club, be sure that you do that because I'll be sending out important emails and updates as we go through these books together. Our goal as an organization is to help people level up. You know, can you imagine, take some of the best leaders in our society today, and if you were to have 20% of a company ran by those people, not just by one head of an operation, but by multiple people that are helping to level, uh, raise the leadership level, I think it'll be absolutely phenomenal. So make, make sure that you're a part of the book club if you wanna raise your game, raise your level of leadership. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the content, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a throwback Monday. And uh, we're going to actually go and look at one of the trainings that I did on January 28, 2019. It doesn't have that many views on it. So what we're doing is we're actually taking it off of YouTube. We're putting it back up on YouTube right now. I think that's how we do it, right, Dylan? Something like that. Okay. So, but except you're going to see all this stuff before it. And it's coming right after right now. <laughs> I'm really good at this thing. <laughs> but guys, stay tuned. Even though some of you may have seen it before, this is one that I feel is so critical to your success if you are building a business with experience. So I hope you enjoy. This is our throwback Monday, and we're gonna be sharing a January 28th video that we shared earlier this year. Thanks so much, and I hope you guys have a powerful week. Don't forget to register. Good morning, champions. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is our official first uh, YouTube Live uh, video, and I've actually got an audience here as well, which is great. Um, some of our advisors and staff, and. Uh, Really excited to share with you guys some industry changing information. Um, the title of our topic today is what you don't know can hurt you. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about um, the challenging, uh, the challenges that we believe are the industry models right now are facing. Uh, we're going to look at a, uh, take a really deep look into some of the industry models and uh, what's, what's unique about them and how Xperior quite literally took the best of the different models and entities and left the rest. And also what I'm going to do that's really exciting is I'm actually going to share some examples of what makes Xperior so unique in the industry. And the reason I'm doing this is for advisors with Xperior to really learn what are some of the cutting edge differences um, about our organization. And I hope that this gives you guys the tools that you need to be processed prospecting confidently knowing that you are representing a fantastic organization with an amazing future ahead of us. So uh, just to get started, there's three types of models um, right now in the industry. And if we look at them, they're, they're made up primarily of career or captive agents. The second one is the MLM, which is multi-level marketing or network marketing, otherwise known as. And the third and final one is the MGA or the managing general agency. So these are the main types of models within the insurance industry. And I'm gonna break down each one of them with their pros and their cons. 
So to start off, the career or the captive agent. Here are some of the pros. There's a strong training and support system. Um, you talk to anyone that comes out of the career model, one of the things that they're very thankful for is the hands-on training that they receive during their time there. Now, I have heard on the reverse that sometimes their training is lopsided, where it's one-dimensional, they're only teaching you know, the products that they offer and not necessarily what might be you know, best all around for every single family. So that's some of the issues there. Um, and another uh, pro, uh, however, is the professionalism and the brand recognition. Guys, you can't run away from that. Um, one thing that we know is that, you know, some of these big organizations sponsor major sporting events. You know, they sponsor the Raptors or they sponsor, you know, the Super Bowl and stuff like that. And that, that's powerful, right? That brings a lot of uh, good, good, um, you know, uh, professionalism around your brand. Now, again, I'm going to throw in my personal opinions as I go through this, but to me, the brand should be you, the advisor right? Because the, the, the clients don't buy the product necessarily, the clients buy the advisor. Um, and that's providing good value, good service, good communication skills, working with families, showing that you genuinely care about them. That's my opinion, what, what is more important about a brand. But let's be honest, it doesn't hurt when your brand is all over the, you know, the, the, the video ads and, and commercials and, and you know, um, online and stuff like that. So those are some of the pros of the career or the captive agencies. Um, and I give you some examples, except this video is public. So I'm not going to give examples of companies today. I'll just let people figure out you know, who I may or may not be talking about. Uh, but then here's some of the cons. Only full-time available with most of these operations. They don't want any part-time agents. And if you can't cut it full-time, if you struggle your first six or 12 months, they cut you loose. Okay, that's one of the negatives. And, and one of the, and I just tell you what really the problem with that is, I've had advisors from other organizations say, well, Jamie, uh, why would you hire people part-time? This is a full-time business. And I'll tell you why. I believe that if we're only hiring full-time agents, we typically have to get someone while they're young. You know, 20s, still living at home with mom and dad, just getting out of university. You look at some of the, the recruiting campaigns with some organizations, they really target the younger audience. Xperia said, well, what if we have someone that's in their 40s and they have a family and a mortgage and everything else, it's difficult for them to walk away from maybe a six-figure income to jump into this industry full-time, commission, it's very hard. So I believe we're able to attract more people by allowing them to start off part-time and make a comfortable transition rather than having to sacrifice, you know, going behind on their, on their debts and their bills and stuff. Um, typically, there's high fees associated with some of the career models out there. I've heard people paying upwards of 700 bucks, 1,000 bucks a month just to have you know a desk space at an office that can get quite costly especially when you're brand new and you're full-time and it's mandatory that you're full-time right right away um, then another con is that there's fewer options for the clients let's face it if you're captive you don't have the widespread product offering that's out there in the brokerage market um, so you are limited uh, time at times to, to the product offerings that you have for clients there's no override system and what I mean by that is they don't have a override structure where someone could join the organization and build a team of advisors. Uh, they can't develop their own agency within the company unless they hit certain accolades and so on and many years of tenure then then there are some opportunities there but it's not a system in place it's not so clear-cut how you could actually build a management team or organization and it's difficult to advance. Um, you're competing with some very high level seasoned advisors and it's very difficult to advance. Matter of fact, there's one organization that cut some 1,000 advisors a year ago uh, from their operations simply because they weren't producing at the level that they wanted these advisors to produce at. So they started terminating them. So that's another uh, negative is that you're, uh, that's just one of the other negatives is that you're getting a lot of the advisors are getting terminated. And then the last but not least, and this one's probably the, the most important, I think if you're gonna build a business, you gotta make sure that you own the business as an advisor because the company or the umbrella that you choose to work under may not be the company that you wanna spend the rest of your career at. However, some people, they get kinda of locked down because the company that they're working for owns their business. The advisor doesn't actually own the business. And that can be a huge problem, um, especially if someone leaves because they want to become independent. Well, now all those clients are left by that to, to be serviced by other agents in that company. And if they want to take over those clients, those clients have to contact them, reach out to them. They're not allowed to solicit them for two years, stuff like that. So those are some of the negatives of the, um, 
of the captive or the career agencies. Um, the network uh, marketing one or the multi-level marketing is my favorite to talk about. Um, I have a lot of experience in this world myself and uh, you know I'll share the pros and the cons here. So some of the pros are good training and support system. You know. I, uh, I got raised in this type of industry and, and I learned so much, you know, a lot of training, a lot of support. Uh, there's part time available, you know, you can, you can move at your own pace and then transition into a full time career, which is fantastic. Uh, override other agents. You can build a team of advisors, um, which some, some MLMs call it a downline or a management team. Um, so that's a benefit. Um, you can develop a big organization. Um, develop multiple streams of income. There's typically a lot of product offerings in the network marketing and you can develop multiple streams of income um, via networking and, and growing your organization. Some of the cons though, it's low compensation for producers. Very rarely in the network marketing world do you see people making a good living on their own pen, you know, going out there helping families on their own. It does happen, but it's extremely rare. Um, then also the negative uh, or lack of professionalism sometimes. See, oftentimes you could be a great person representing, you know, a, a company, but unfortunately you'll be judged based on the company that you represent. And then you'll see all kinds of crazy things. People actually change the name of the company while they're working in the company. You know, they're, they're saying that they're this company or they're a part of this company rather than just saying their company name, they're dodging the company name because they're so embarrassed by it because unfortunately some other people maybe ruined the opportunity or took advantage of some folks. And that could be unfortunate uh, for the good people out there that are trying to just build a great business in the network marketing or the multi-level marketing structure. Then we look at the high turnover rate. You know, when you're recruiting 100 people to get 10 people licensed, to get one of them producing, it's a huge turnover. And these are some of the numbers and statistics out there in this industry that people are just recruiting to recruit to recruit to get into someone's market, to try and make more sales in their market, just to feed their bills, to pay their bills. And we believe at Xperia that's absolutely wrong. That is not the way to build a business long term. You cannot have a 60, 70% turnover year after year. And, and in my opinion, continue to grow. I believe it'll hit a certain point and then it will start to go like this, right? Because eventually, you know, the turnover can destroy your business. Um, I've heard often, you know, in the, in the network marketing world that the model is recruit, recruit, recruit. That's how you build a business. You recruit, recruit, recruit. I would argue that you should actually recruit, retrain and retain. And, and that's what we're doing at Xperia. We're recruiting advisors, a lot of them from the industry and some of them green. We're retraining them. A lot of them have been taught wrong concepts. You know, there's a lot of companies that are one dimensional. They only sell one product or, or parts of the organizations only sell one product. You know, they're very one sided and, and we want to show people that, hey, there's a lot of products out there. There's a lot of great products for everybody out there. And then, um, and, that, and that's how I feel that we're, you know, given a big advantage to these advisors. So that's the retraining aspect. And then there's the retaining right? We're retaining agents. Hey, do we lose agents? Of course we do. Every, every organization, you're going to have advisors come and go and, and people join and walk, decide that it's not for them. But our retention is right around 90% each year. 90% of licensed advisors stay with us. Some companies, it's close to 50%, 40 to 50% uh, uh, that, that leave. Um, you know, so when we're losing 10%, I mean, we're, we're very happy with that. And it's because I believe of the, the model that we've created at Xperia, which is fantastic. Um, then we look at uh, difficult to go full time. You know, those are some of the cons when you're not making enough money on your own pen, helping families, it's going to be very difficult to go full time in the business. So I always teach people that you need to make money first, not try and recruit and build and all that. Hey, that's a part of it. But I believe that making money is more important in this business. You can't, have the blind leading the blind. I want people that are making money as financial advisors and then figure out the recruiting game. Because if you can't, if you can't sell and you can't make money yourself, what business do you have? In my opinion, recruiting a bunch of people. Now everyone comes and some people listen to that and they go, well, Jamie, no, that's not my, that's not how I run my business. You know, I, I believe that they can recruit and, and you know, sell at the same time. Yes. But you heard that you said sell at the same time. You still have to be out in the field, sitting down at the kitchen table with families, kneecap to kneecap, learning the business or selling a product if you're licensed while you're building a business. Okay. So don't, don't be one of these people that, you know, you fake it till you make it or, you know, one day when I reach the top of the mountain, I'm going to make all kinds of money to make up for the struggling I'm going through right now. That's garbage. I believe that you shouldn't be struggling right now. If you're a full-time advisor, 
you should be making money. If you're a part-time advisor, hey, that's okay. You're making some extra cash on the side. It's helping you out, paying your bills. You're helping a few families. But when you go full-time, this isn't one of those starve your way to the top deals, okay? This is make a living, pay your bills, have success on your way to the, to the top. Hoping and upset too many people there. Um, next one, uh, limited products. You know, um, sometimes the companies uh, in the network marketing, they are limited in terms of their products and offerings. And once again, despite what they tell you, the company owns your business. You don't, not, you don't own your, your client base. You don't own your business. Some companies call it vesting. That's, that's not ownership. Ownership is owning something. If you leave the company, all your clients go with you. If you leave the company and you want to sell your business, you can sell your business. That's ownership. Okay. And now the managing general agency. And you see, I got some old guys up there because uh, I believe that the managing general agency is an extremely old, um, industry and a lot of the advisors have been around for a number of years and one of the reasons for that is most of the MGAs their recruiting um, practices are just taking agents from other MGAs I mean that's that's their that's their game plan to success is we're just gonna recruit other agents um, and that's okay because hey we do that too but I believe that there's got to be an element of organic growth you know bringing the young people into the organization and training them and showing them how to have success as well so that this industry continues for another 50 years okay um, here's some pros and cons of the MGA channel high personal compensation level in the MGA channel typically you can broker to multiple carriers. You have all types of companies that you can do business with. You have independence, which is great. A lot of people want independence. I think independence is a curse though if you're lazy, okay? It, it can definitely be a curse. You own your book of business with most MGAs. I've seen some guys that they, they run their shops differently, but most MGAs, you own your book of business. And then the cons, there's a lack of support. Most of the training is just having a wholesaler come into the office or, you know, renting a hotel room and they're teaching you about their product and how to, you know, what's good about their product. There's very little on the training, um, sales training, personal development, stuff like that, working with customers. Um, and that's, that's where there is truly a lack of support, I feel. There's no multiple override structure. So in the MGA world, there's an MGA with an AGA and the AGA has brokers. So the AGA's job is to go out and recruit these brokers. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see my face here. Dylan, can they see my face right now? Oh yeah. Okay, so, so MGA's up here, AGA's right here, and they recruit all the agents down here. And then the AGA has to convince the agents down here to stay in their AGA and not go direct to the MGA, because guess what, if they go direct to the MGA, they make more money. So in my opinion, and again, I'm not here to offend anybody, but my opinion is, if you're an MGA, the reason you have AGAs is to convince them that they own their business, that they can go and recruit people, but really you're just using the AGA to recruit and build your MGA. That's that's the deal. Um, and again, this is just my opinion. You don't have to hold this against me, um, but because uh, we're all entitled to our opinions. But that's, to me, not a long-term strategy because here's what happens in almost every case, and I've seen this time and time again. I've been almost 18 years in financial services now. You have an MGA with an AGA with brokers. These brokers catch wind of the MGA world, and they realize, well, why am I making less than this guy or gal right here when I'm just as good as them? I want to go across town and start my own AGA and guess what they do that and every MGA is there to take your people anytime you know they're, they're asking um, and that's that becomes a problem for people trying to build a business I've had other AGA say well I'm gonna be an MGA and I'll go that's great how long have you been in the industry oh 20 years what why haven't you been why aren't you an MGA now see the challenge with being an MGA now in in this day and age is the compliance right there's a lot of protocols in place you know the industry's changing I mean it's not what it was even five years ago when Xperia launched let alone 15 20 years ago when there was hardly any regulation around running an MGA pretty much anyone could do it put up shop you know as long as they had a little bit of volume well the industry's really really changed a lot since then um, I was just going over some of the expenses uh, with our president and our COO and it blew me away just in technology costs that we're we're, we're putting out more in technology than our company made in, pro, in 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 gross revenue our first year I mean so it's it's a lot of you know a lot of um, a lot more to do that than than some people might recognize but that said, with that override structure where it's just linear like this, it really affects agents from building a long-term sustainable business. And at, towards the end of this presentation, I'm actually gonna talk just about Xperior and how we fixed all of those problems that currently exist right now um, in, in this type of structure for people that wanna build a business. Because my belief is most financial advisors are entrepreneurial by nature. 
That's why they're financial advisors. They wanna build their own business and their company within a company. Well then why not give them all the tools and resources to do that and that's what we've done at Xperia. Um, you lose your best agents. As I said, if you're an AGA and you're bringing in some guys and gals, eventually they're gonna run across town and, and try and get the next person hanging, hanging the bigger carrot. Uh, there's no name recognition. Matter of fact, some MGAs are, are saying that you're not allowed to use their name when you're you know, publishing to the, like, out to the public. You have to have your own uh, brand name. And your MGA, <laughs> this one, Sheldon, you like that one? Yeah. So your MGA will poach your agents. Yeah. Like, hear me now. <laughs> this has happened with three big MGAs I've dealt with myself growing into growing experience. They actually go into your AGA and they poach them right from you like that. <laughs> you imagine? Nathaniel, you imagine if I decided that Frank's ticking me off, <laughs> right? Frank, you watching? Frank's ticking me off. I go, hey, Frank, listen. Uh, you're bothering me, and uh, your buddy David Longmore, I see he's doing good. By the way, about to be an executive director, it looks like with the numbers. So listen, David really wants to work with me. He doesn't like you, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to assign David to me. Could you imagine if I did that? Could you imagine if that was... That's how a lot of MGAs work. I've seen it with three of them myself growing in this business. And you want to build a business like that? Where they're just going to take your people from you? See, we have something called integrity over here where we're not doing that kind of jazz. Okay, and, and I'm not saying that, hey, listen, listen, I know that might be a little shot to some people. I'm not making saying company names here, but man, you gotta run your business with integrity, guys. That's how we operate. Um, so the MGA will poach your agents. I, I guess I forgot this was live show. <laughs> I love it. And watch this one, watch this one. The MGA will terminate agents. Hey, listen, this one. Some MGAs don't want part-time agents. They look at them more as a hassle than anything. But here's why we're able to bring on part-time agents. Because people might go, yeah, well, Xperia, you know, you bring in a lot of part-time agents. Hey, listen, we understand that. But we also run training 20 times a week, right? We're doing webinars, we're doing uh, podcasts, we're doing all kinds, constantly train, 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 so that even the part-time agent, I mean, if I wanted to, probably at midnight, because we got people in, in, in BC and we got people all over the country, I can get on a training pretty much any time I want during the day. And if, I'm, if there's not a live training going on, which there usually is like multiple every day in all the different offices, I can get one that's pre-recorded off the back office or go onto our YouTube channel. There's just so much training going on. So even our part-time advisors can still be plugged in around their schedule. But see, if you're only doing training once a month and you have a part-time agent with a full-time job and your training is done on a Friday afternoon because that's what's convenient for all the big wigs running the trainings, well, then it's going to be difficult for a part-time agent to survive in that type of model. Whereas with us, because we have a lot of the training, it's really uh, beneficial for them. So that's the three types of models. Now, call me biased because I am, but I'm also just sharing with you facts. Fact is, the MJs will terminate your agents. The fact is, they'll poach your agent. The fact is, they don't want you using their name. The fact is, you will lose your best agents. The fact is, they don't have a multiple override structure. And the fact is, they don't provide tremendous tra training and support. So. You could be upset if you're watching this as an outsider or you can realize that, hey, this guy Jamie Prickett's got his head on straight because he's just stating fact after fact after fact after fact. That's all I'm doing there. So that all said to preface what I'm gonna share next. Next, oh, no team camaraderie. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one too, right? We have a, uh, an amazing team camaraderie. It's people wanting to see other people win. I remember we were at a big event one time uh, with a lot of our leaders and Sheldon looked at me and he goes, Jamie, look around you. And I was looking around, it was our executive directors. We had about 25 or 30 of them. We're out having a nice uh, dinner. We're actually at SSQ's head office for our um, executive director leadership council meeting. And there's about 25 or 30 executive directors and some of them even flew in. Uh, Darren Stephanie from Alberta. Uh, Delroy drove down from um, uh, Quebec. And there's a few others. I know I'm missing some names here. But, and then a bunch of our obviously local executive directors. And Sheldon says, Jamie, look around. And I was like, right? Like, cause leader, 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 leader is just awesome. And he goes, this does not happen in the MGA world. That was Sheldon who's been around for 44 years. He said, this doesn't happen. The team camaraderie that we have, the people helping people, wanting to watch other people thrive. Um, many of you guys were at the gala, right? Except for you, Debbie. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but guys, that doesn't exist with most MGAs. It doesn't have that type of camaraderie around it. So we're really, really proud of that. Um, and a matter of fact, when I get asked sometimes, you know, what makes Xperia different? The number one thing out of my mouth is culture. I said, that's what makes us different is our culture. And to couple that with the fact that I'm, what I'm going to show you right here, but culture would be definitely number one, uh, because let, let's face it, guys, people don't 
people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I might not be the smartest CEO in the, of all the companies out there, and I might not know all the intricacies of every single aspect of our business. That's why I hire smarter people than myself. But I do know that I care, and I think that goes a longer way than just you know someone that's got an MBA or a CLU or CFP or all those other things after their name, right? Which I don't have any. <laughs> so. Okay, so how is Xperior different? Glad you asked. We took the best from all three, and these are the ones that I'm gonna focus on today. There's probably a thousand more, but we took the override team building structure plus a higher compensation to the producer. I'm gonna show you how we did that. We also looked at having multiple carriers and products. We also looked at ownership, and I'm gonna show you our ownership on steroids. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. And then I'm also gonna to talk to you about our training and development, okay? so. The override team building model plus higher compensation to the producer. Here's how it works. In the agency or on the personal level, we pay up to a 140 personal bonus plus bonuses on top of that, which you can earn another 10 to 30% for a maximum personal bonus of 170. Um, Sheldon, do you realize that that's just on the company level with the carriers? What we're fixing to do, we're going to have agents earning a 170. 90 bonus wow. on their personal product. I, this doesn't even make sense to some of you, um, but but that 190 on a personal. And someone might go, yeah, well, Jamie, I'm an AGA and I have a 190. Hey, that's good. Let me know how long that lasts for. Let me know how long your people stay for. Guys, what I'm going to show you here, you can actually, with our new program, we're building up to a 190 personal bonus, depending on the carrier and so on. So uh, pretty cool. So stay tuned for that Xperior people, but uh, we're working on something that you have no idea yet and it's exciting. But for now, you can earn up to 170 depending on the carrier, okay? 140 no matter what, and then 170 with different additional bonuses based on personal production. In addition, we have something called generational overrides. I'm gonna explain that in a minute as well. We're also building an introductory, pro, an in, we have an introductory program that again is going to be launched with a bonus pool. That's something new that should be uh, settled within the next 60 days, okay? So stay tuned on that. But I'm gonna talk to you about generational overrides. So what that means is in addition, over and above what we pay on the personal bonus there that you're looking at, the 140 up to 170, depending on volumes with each carrier. In addition to that, we pay generational overrides. And I know it's a little foggy there, um, but a first generation is this. If I am an executive director and I promote you to executive director and you've got a team of 10, 15, 20, 50 advisors, I will earn as the promoting executive director 28% bonus on every single piece of volume that your agency brings in. What I'm not showing on these slides just to keep it simple today is that you'll also earn when you promote a first generation. This is like an independent AGA, okay? So they're independent of you. If this was the insurance industry, typically, this is someone that you promoted and you lost them altogether. You'll never make another penny as long as you live. You had to train them, work with them, have them over for dinner at your house, uh, you know, get to know their kids, get to know their family, and then when they become successful, you lose them 100%. That's how it traditionally works in the, in the MGA world. With us, you'll continue to earn a 28% bonus for the rest of your life on the production of that agent. When there's a vested interest, you're gonna get a little bit more time and attention from someone because let's face it, yes, you wanna help people, right? Because we're in the business of helping people, but we don't do it for free. You need to get paid to help people unless it's some charitable thing that you're doing you know, part-time or whatever. But if this is your full-time deal and this is what you're doing, you gotta get paid when you're helping people. Well, this is how we repay our executive directors for helping us develop other executive directors. You get a 28% bonus. That's on a first generation. Then if that person promotes someone to executive director, that's now a second generation from them. You're still earning 14%. This continues for seven generations, never before done in financial services. That's an additional 53% bonus paid throughout your organization to your business. So therefore, if you wanted to build your own company, and you wanted to try and do exactly like Xperia's doing, you would have to have over 20 full-time staff, an 8,000 square, square foot location, over 25,000 a month just in technology costs, okay? Compliance, e &O, you, like all the different things that come with, I'm probably missing 100,000 different things, right? Probably looking at over a $2 million a year budget to run your MGA or your AGA operation and in order to compete with Xperior, you'd have to be able to pay out 193% bonus minimum up to the potential of a 223 bonus throughout all the organization. How does that happen? 
And a lot of people go, well, you know, uh, who, who's back in Xperior? Well, so far so good. We haven't needed to bail out and have someone back us. Now that said, we have some interest from multiple investors as I speak to you right now. However, we don't need investors. We don't need any capital. We're doing great without that. However, how cool is it to know that we have people that want to buy into us because they want to help us get into the States and other things like that, right? But if we just decided, hey, we're just going to stay in Canada, we're cool, we wouldn't have to raise a single penny. We're doing absolutely phenomenal. But the fact is we do want to go to the States, so we are looking at some of the strategic partnerships, okay? So that said, that's our operation and how the compensation works throughout the generations. Now, how about the multiple carriers? Well. We have access to almost every insurance company in Canada, over 25 of them. Most of them are direct MGAs, which I'll show you in a minute. We have a partnership with a mutual fund dealer. So if people want to do their, their funds, they can absolutely do that. We have a partnership with a mortgage brokerage. So it's a referral program, over 50 lenders that we deal with over there. Uh, partnership with BDO. This is for our consumer proposals and bankruptcies. We have a partnership with Legal Shield. This is where we can give clients uh, simple legal advice, uh, identity theft, and wills. And we have a partnership with an ETF and an EMD program provider so we can do the exchange traded funds as well as the exempt market dealing on a referral basis. So there's some of our direct contracts. These are just direct MGA uh, contracts. So we obviously have access to the different ones, Sun Life, Avari, whoever else we have access to. But these are the direct uh, contracts that we have there. And now the last uh, part of this segment is ownership. So. Ownership at Xperior works like this. You own your book of business. If you sell your book of business, we will pay you 75% of all residual income that you're making over 10 years. That's a seven and a half times valuation on your book of business. So what is the traditional MGA? Well, the traditional MGA doesn't have an ownership program, okay? Although you do own your book of business. But if you're with a traditional MGA, you have to find someone to buy your business and you could typically get between two to three times your annual earnings. So it's a 200 to 300% return on your, on your book. Ours is a 750% return and it's guaranteed. It's built right into our program. So you don't have to find a buyer. We do that for you. Okay. Next is ownership of your agency. This does not exist at all in the MGA channel or the career channel, uh, but you own your agency. And what this means is we will actually pay you 75% of every piece of business generated under your organization. So I'll give an example. Guy Morrow has one of our, has the biggest organization at Xperia right now. If Morrow decided to sell his business, he basically, his income would just continue going because he owns his business. But let's just say he wants to move out of the country and, you know, and doesn't want to be around or anything, just wants to sell his business. We'll pay him 75% of every single piece of business generated from his code for the next 10 years. Even more importantly, because Morrow's probably never going to sell his business, more importantly, if Morrow dies, we are the only MGA in the country that will continue to pay his family, Mara and the two boys, 75% of every single piece of revenue generated from that code for the next 10 years. And just to make it simple, Morrow's going to make probably over a half million, maybe 600,000 this year, possibly more, uh, but half a million if he doesn't work that hard. Okay. <laughs> he's got a good, he's got a big business. Okay. So that means if he only made a half a million and let's just say his income stayed flatline, which it's not, it continues to climb. That means that we would pay $375,000 a year multiplied by 10 years. That's a $3.75 million valuation on his business. And he's only been here for three years. Ain't that something? So that's the business. Hey, guess what? If Morrow had to built that business somewhere else, do you know what his business would be worth? Well, first of all, he couldn't have built that business somewhere else because it doesn't exist the way that our model does. But had he of, if it existed somewhere else, let's just say hypothetically, zero. His business would be worth nothing if he dies. And that's one of the huge values that we built in. And that, by the way, uh, for those watching, that is contractual. We have a document for that. And you can take that to your lawyer and have them, you know, give them your thumbs up on it. But that's contractual. This isn't a hypothetical. Like if you decide to sell your business one day down the road, we'll then figure out what your business is worth. I know a couple guys that got screwed pretty bad that tried to do it that way with another organization. And they're now with Xperia, thankfully. But uh, these guys, they'll tell you the truth about it. It's not what you think. It's not what you, th if it's not in writing, if it's not contractual, it is not what you think. Okay. So just be sure that you do your homework. Um, profit sharing pool. This is something new. I'm not going to touch on it because I haven't even announced it yet, but to stay tuned in the next 60 days, we're excited about that. And this exists for one more year. We've decided that anyone that becomes an executive director with Xperior will actually own shares 
in the company. Right now we have some 50 executive director shareholders in Xperia. So how, how cool is that? That they actually own a piece of the overall company, company profitability. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a quick example here of building a book of business versus building a business. Now, my opinion, you should do both. Okay, you should lead from the front, show people how to build a client base. But watch this. In the traditional MGA, if you book, build a book of business, because everyone talks about ownership, ownership, ownership. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you. Versus Xperia and building a team. If you were to do 100,000 of annual premium every year, let's say that approximates about 50,000 of FYC. And you did that every year for 10 years. That's a million dollars of in-force premium after 10 years and we are assuming 100% retention. So obviously you'd have to write more than that in order to have that 100%, like in order to have that kind of retention. But let's just say it's 100% retention, you have a million in force. Now I always ask people, if you were to do this for 10 years, 100,000 a year for 10 years, you're a stud or stud ed. I mean, those are some good numbers, right? You're not a, like, like you're, you're doing well, right? You're paying your bills, right? You're doing quite well. Uh, watch this though. The average carrier's lifetime renewals, which, which is what typically the ownership is based on, is the lifetime renewals, okay? Its average is 2%. Some companies are higher, some are lower. So 2% of a million means that you're now making 20,000 a year of residuals. Now I'm only talking about insurance here. Obviously if you're selling investments, this substantial, like this makes it a lot higher, but I'm just gonna use ex insurance for both examples. So you're now making 20,000 a year of residuals, okay? Average book sale at two and a half times, if we take the average, means that you're worth $50,000 if you sell your business, okay? If you die, you're worth zero, other than whatever life insurance you own, and if you're in this industry, you should probably own a lot of it, okay? But your business is worth nothing if you die. Your family doesn't get it, unless they're licensed in the business, of course, then, you could tr then it could be transferred. Now, how, how about this? How about you build a team at Xperia? You recruit one agent every quarter. Everyone think that's possible, right? One a quarter, we got people doing it a week, but let's just say one a quarter. Train them to do one quarter of what we were showing the superstar on the left-hand side. So if they did one quarter of that, that means that you would have a business with four people doing 25,000 of production each. That's 100,000 a year. That's 12,500 of FYC a year, correct? If they just continued to be average producers doing 25,000 a year, a little bit below average, right? Because that's not a lot of volume. So watch this, if they did that for 10 years, you had four of them and they each did that for 10 years, they never got any better. After 10 years, that would be a million a year of premium coming in every year. That's a half a million of FYC. If I showed you an average override of 30%, and by the way, depending on their levels, your average override's probably gonna be higher than that, but let's just assume worst case scenario here. 30% average override, that's 150 a year of residuals coming into your business. Well, watch the ownership at Xperia. Watch why I believe building a business versus building a book is way more valuable for people long-term. Because the Xperia ownership plan says 75% multiple of 10 years that's $1.1 million valuation versus a $50,000 valuation. And I would argue that it's a lot more simple to build a team than it is to build a book of that size. I, I would argue that all day long that it's, now I do believe that you need some different skills to build a team. You're gonna have to grow as a leader and, and you know, you're gonna have to be able to encourage people and motivate them and help them and, and work with them. You're gonna have to be very patient. Working with clients requires patience as well, but not to the same level as working with new advisors that are green in the business, right? Um, Cause they have doubts and fears and worries and everything else. You gotta get them, you know, listening to good audios, reading the right books and getting their minds straight because this is a tough business, right? Most people, count themselves out because they're not willing to grow as an individual. I've seen people that honestly had no business succeeding in financial services when they joined us, but they succeeded because they grew as a person. They got better as a person. You know, we had a story where Rakesh uh, was at our gala. He was the number one personal producer in the, in the entire organization. And at the gala and before the gala, he was saying that he was that close to quitting one year prior that close to quitting because he doubted whether he, whether he could do it. Then he seen a guy named Michael Santanato, went out and did it. Young guy, got licensed, became an executive director. That 
Michael winning gave Rakesh belief that he could do it too. He's like, man, if Michael can do it and he's new, I can do it too. Rakesh comes back a year later, number one personal producer and an executive director with Xperia. That's the power of your mind. Rakesh was that close to quitting, yet something happened and this is part of the team camaraderie. I want to share success stories all the time with people because it's one of the most powerful tools to give you belief that, hey, that person did it and I'm just like them. You know, my brother-in-law, Darren, I'm so pumped up. He's now joined Xperia, right? He was a, he, he's a trades guy. He did um, uh, home renovations. He just joined Xperia on the weekend after coming to the gala. And the reason he joined is he goes, Jamie, I'm watching people up there and the timing is right for me. I'm a business guy. I know how to build a business. He, he, he left his other business now and he wants to come into Xperia full-time, become an executive director in Brantford. And the reason that he said that he knew he could do it is he goes, I started hearing the people's stories on stage. I started hearing about this one and struggles they went through and I heard this one in the background. He goes, he's sitting there going, I can do this. I could do this, right? And, and it's true, right? But um, that, that's what's so cool about, um, about this business is that we, we like to share those kind of stories. And, and I believe that anyone can achieve what I'm showing you on the right if they're willing to work on themselves and grow. How about the training and development? So we have weekly YouTube Live with the CEO. That's me. Hello. Um, so we're doing this every week. Uh, multiple weekly webinars with top leaders all across the country. Weekly webinars with insurance carriers and other partners. Live in-class trainings at some of our 20 office locations across Canada. Our WhatsApp group is crazy. Um, so much knowledge. We have product groups. We have leadership groups. Um, you know, we have different training segment groups. It's fantastic. And, uh, you know, if someone has a question at Xperia, they put it into a WhatsApp group. Within 30 seconds, they usually have an answer. How cool is that? You know, a lot of people, I feel like when you're in the MGA world, it's a lonely world and you don't have access to that much answers at your fingertips. Well, here you do. It's really cool. So let's just talk about building a business now. If you built a business at Xperia, and let's just say on the low end of the ED numbers, you're at a 140 bonus and you're doing 3,000 of FYC every month and 50,000 of investments. And you've also got some financial advisors, senior financial advisors, and sales managers in your business. Between all three of those levels, you're producing another 18,000 of FYC. So when I do this in meetings with a lot of our advisors, I ask who thinks that's possible? Every single hand goes up because there's nothing, you're not shooting out the lights there. And as an investment business, you're only doing 200,000 between, excuse me, a month between you and your, and your team. Well, if I show that to people and I say, what do you think you would make on that? A lot of people go, oh man, you probably make like a hundred grand or, you know, 80 grand, something like that. Watch this. If you built a business like that, by the way, this dream calculator is available on our back office under the resource center. So make sure you check it out, plug in your numbers and see what's going on in your business. But watch this. Your income is a quarter of a million dollars to build a business like that. Isn't that ridiculous? Let me go back. 18,000 of FYC. 200,000 of investments in your agency. This isn't when you promote other executive directors, it's just in your agency. That business would pay you a quarter million dollars a year. I'm not so interested in your bonus. I'm interested in how much is going into your bank account. How many families are you impacting? How many advisors' lives are you changing and showing how to become successful? That's what interests me. I don't give a crap about your 180 bonus when you're walking into my office when your shoes got holes in them, right? You're rolling up in a Ford Temple and you're talking about a 180 bonus. That's not of interest to me. What's of interest to me is what's going into your bank account, what's going into your advisor's bank accounts, and what impact are you making on families' lives? If it's zero, zero, and zero, it don't matter what your bonus is because last I checked, zero times any other number is zero, right? Hey, I just learned something. This is kind of cool. If you pull out a calculator, do you guys know what the number is? If you multiply every single number on a calculator by the other numbers, do you know what it equals? Zero every time. Yeah, because there's a zero in it, so it's always going to be, ah, <laughs> learn that. <laughs> it's not just a pretty face. <laughs> so now watch this. How about this example? Let's just say you get your business rocking and rolling. You're doing 5000 a month of FYC. You're doing another 35000 a month between your financial advisors, senior financial advisors, and sales managers. That's your agency. You got things rocking. You're doing 700000 a month of investments, right? That'd be like a really, really slow, slow month for someone like Morrow or Frank or, or Laval or Diane Bittner or Rick Shirley Forbes. These are like, that'd be like a slow month for these kind of people, right, in, in investments. Um, and, you know, 35000 FYC, that's like a slow month for Donna Maria. But why? Watch this, watch this, and Rosilda. Watch this, first generation, now you got someone else doing what you're doing. 
And let's just say you have a second generation and a third generation. You just got one, one, one. So you got one under the other, okay? Not direct, just one under the other. And they're all doing 700,000 investments. That's 140,000 a month of FYC, 2.8 million of investments. Watch this. You're making 726,000 a year. I would argue that 80 to 90% of MGAs do not earn that much income. Sheldon, am I right? 80 to 90%? Yeah. Probably wouldn't earn that kind of income. Watch that. So we've got advisors, businesses doing this right now. They're making more money than most MGAs are. Then what, what is MGA? Nothing more than a three letter acronym, right? To me, it's what's going into your bank account, what's going into your team's bank account, and what impact are you making on families out there? That's what's important. Don't give me your titles. Don't tell me about the letters after your name. Tell me how many people's lives you're changing, that you're changing your own life, and that you're also helping a lot of families. So next, watch this. Some of you are gonna believe that, hey, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do 5,000 a month still, 100,000 investments every month. That's not shooting the lights out. A lot of advisors at Xperia are doing this all the time. But now you have financial advisors joining the business that are new, senior financial advisors, a little bit more experience, and sales managers getting ready to become executive directors. 80,000 a month, a million of investments. Look at your generations. Now you've promoted three firsts, maybe three or four or five seconds, maybe three or four or five thirds. I'm not even going all seven. By the way, you start recruiting and training people. You start recruiting, retraining, and retaining people. This will happen. That will happen in your business right there. Watch this. That will pay you $2.5 million. That's over $200,000 a month. This is ridiculous. Now, here's the wonderful thing about this. This is math. Math is not hypothetical. Math is facts. These are the numbers. If you do that, we pay you that. Sheldon, that's how it works. You do that, we pay you that. It's a business. It's a beautiful thing. These are the numbers. I'm excited because this is an industry-wide opportunity. We've been able to attract licensed agents. We have an MGA size product offering, industry competitive compensation, no doubt, online, local, and national trainings. You get to train others to build a company within a company, not just feed your bills, feed your family, but you can actually show other people to have, have success. We have multiple exit strategies. If you die, if you retire, if you quit, we have exit strategies that are beneficial to you, the advisor. Team builders plus AGAs, even MGAs. We've had two MGAs that have joined Xperia and we're working on a couple more. They moved under Xperia's MGA. Why? Because now we can handle processing, back office, payroll, and now they can expand and grow nationally and soon internationally. Online, local, national support again, and then multiple exit strategies, even for the AGAs and the MGAs out there that might be looking to get out of the business. One of the successful MGAs that we brought under the Xperia fold, we partnered with them and they didn't want to exit. They joined us to continue to grow. Right? And some may want to do it because they're looking as an exit strategy. Either way, we have solutions to offer people. And then for the non-licensed, this is the part-time training and licensing program we have. You can start a career um, you know, in one of the highest paid industries, which is financial services, the insurance business, online and local training support. Learn how to build a business with residual income. I mean, that, that, that I can't stress enough how powerful residual income is. The reason why, and I have some of our employees here today, but the reason why employees can't become as wealthy long-term as business owners. It's easier for a business owner, so don't hold this against me, guys. <laughs> but it's easier for a business owner to become wealthy because they build in passive income, right? So when you process something or you go to work every day, you're just paid by the hour, right? Hour in, hour out. Hour in, hour out. That's all you can get. At, at Experior, when you build a business, it's hour in, couple minutes out right right or sorry hour in hour and a couple minutes out hour in hour and 10 minutes and you the more time you're putting in the more hours you're creating for yourself uh, I'll give you an example here um, look at one of our leaders um, let me think of someone like Balji so Balji Palmer's got a good team going right now he's got a couple executive directors he's got a nice business Balji puts in an hour but his business is working 15 hours or 10 hours in the same hour that he works that one hour, his business is working 10 or 15 hours. Take, take, take Leanne, for example. She's my boss, right? Leanne works one hour, but her business is working thousands. That's the difference. That's the difference between Xperia and the employee, or that's also the difference between Xperia and the financial advisor. See, the financial advisor at Xperia can build 
one hour and turn that into hundreds and thousands of hours. That's why the numbers don't make sense. You go, man, how could you make two and a half million a year? Easy. It's not your hour that we're counting on. It's the hours of people that you're building. There's two ways to become wealthy in this industry. One is assets under management, and that can also be insurance and force, right? That, I count that as kind of assets under management. That's the residual income that advisors earn. You work today, you get paid tomorrow for the same business you did yesterday and the year before and the year before. Assets under management, and the last, the second one is people under management. You develop other successful people in your business, that generates passive revenue, that's the magic formula. Assets under management, people under management, and that's what we show people the opportunity to do at Xperia. Uh, thankfully, our staff do get to be shareholders because we issue stock in the company, uh, so that's good. You get to partake in that as well. Um, now, last thing I want you guys to do, anyone that's watching this right now, do me a favor. Um, Dylan, I think I just point down. They could do it down. Is it right down? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. It's down or up? Pretty much right below you. Yeah. Right below you. <laughs> Subscribe to this channel guys so that way you're notified every week when we do this. In addition to these weekly trainings that I'm going to do, we're also going to be, um, sorry, we're also going to be doing um, uploads throughout the week. And I don't always put them out in WhatsApp, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be informed every time that we have some trainings coming up. Hopefully you guys got something out of today, uh, all you people uh, out in YouTube land. I really hope that this was valuable for you. What I'm going to ask a huge favor send me an email to jamie at experiorfinancial.com with content that you want to learn about next week. If you got something specific for your team that you would like me to train on, whether it be products or you know uh, sales techniques or how to get referrals or whatever it may be, I want to hear from you. Please let me know what's important to you. Again, it's jamie at experiorfinancial.com and subscribe to this channel and I look forward to next week uh, training with you guys. Thank you so much. So, cool.